Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to do an unboxing and overview of the Porsche Design Book 1. This is a laptop made by, and so far the only laptop made by Porsche Design. And for those of you who don't know, Porsche Design is not directly related to the, the Porsche cars. Um, they only do the designing. So they not only do cars, but they also do uh, a whole bunch of other accessories. They do like clothing, they do uh, pens, they do watches. Um, and tech products as well. They also make headphones and speakers, I believe, as well. So, uh, as well as my BlackBerry, I believe I did an unboxing of my Porsche Design BlackBerry um, P9981 before in the past. So they've done several collaborations. You can even find the Porsche Design Huawei Mate 30, I believe, uh, and that's also out. So they often do collaborations with different companies uh, to kind of give their design style, right, to, um, and usually charge a premium. But uh, from what I've seen, this notebook, uh, it is marketed uh, as a premium notebook and very similar to a Microsoft Surface book. So we're going to take a look here. So this design, as you can see, very, very clean design. Uh, and it's designed to be quite similar to the Microsoft Surface book, except with the Porsche design style on it. And of course, they charge a premium for it. But this one I got actually at a discount because this notebook's actually two years old. It originally came out in 2017. So to get it this year, 2019, it's already been two years old. And so I actually got a pretty decent deal on it. It already originally retailed for $2,500 US. And I got it on eBay now for only $800 US. So it's quite a hefty discount from when it was originally released. So it's the notebook itself. Uh, what else does it come with? Come with it comes with a pen, so that's nice. The Surface Book doesn't actually include a pen; you have to buy it separately. And a lot of other um, convertible. This is a convertible. A lot of other convertible computers, they don't come with a pen. You have to buy it separately. And uh, Porsche Design actually includes it in the box, which is quite nice. So, see, so has two buttons right here, and then um, it's Porsche Design the logo on the back actually feels quite nice almost yeah like a pencil very very natural so it's nice that they included this pen because usually other convertible laptop makers HP Spectre X360 and uh, Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 uh, Surface Book they don't include the pen inside the box what else do we get we get the Porsche design compu uh, computing manual it's a guide right here you also get the room service. We got a uh, safety and legal information here. Not very interesting for most people, but it's there. And then in the other packet here, oh, in the other compartment here, we get a charger. This is using a USB C charger, which is very nice. No proprietary chargers here. You also get an adapter, an adapter in the box, which is quite nice as well. Again, Apple doesn't do this. Uh, so they give you HDMI. This is a Thunderbolt 3 to HDMI adapter, it looks like. So, very nice. And I believe that is it. That is the extent of what's inside the box. Okay. So, it's a decent box. Um, includes a lot of extra accessories. The charger and, of course, but you also get a dongle here which a lot of laptops don't give you, like MacBooks and stuff, don't give you an extra uh, dongle to buy them separately. And same with the, the pen here, the Porsche Design pen, they give you that as well, which is nice. So let's look at the computer itself. This is a 13.3 inch computer. And it is, uh, the resolution is 3200 by 1800. So it's quite a high resolution display. It's not quite uh, 4K. So 4K would be 3840 by 2160. This one is uh, 3200 by 1800, not quite 4K. But uh, it's reasonably in line with the Surface Book specs, which is 3000 by 2000. Of course, this is a 16-9 aspect ratio, whereas the Surface Book was a 3-2 aspect ratio. So I like the 3-2 aspect ratio better, but you know, 69 is probably better for watching movies and stuff. 3-2 better for productivity, reading web pages and stuff like that. 
Um, and yeah, this keyboard feels really nice. A lot of people have compared this to the Surface Book keyboard as well. Um, I think they're reasonably similar. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. Uh, and again, trackpad also same, similar feeling, I think. We can look at the similarities and differences between this and the Surface Book 2, but what's important to note is that this one is the only model available. They only released one model, and it is this one. It runs a Core i7 7500U, which is a seventh gen processor because this came out two years ago, uh, which is already kind of outdated. You know, now we have uh, 10th gen processors, right? But even in 2017, there were 8th gen processors that were starting to come out. So this is already updated by the time it came out, but at least it gives us uh, the Core 7 7500U, which was the top end CPU for laptops at the time, ultra low voltage, and also 16 gigs of RAM, top end configuration, 512 gigabyte SSD, which is another top end configuration, uh, and, de and uh, no dedicated GPU. That's a big difference between this one and the Surface Book. Surface Book, uh, you could get at least with the Surface Book 2, you can get a 1050 uh, GTX, NVIDIA GTX 1050 uh, in the performance space. This one, uh, no performance space kind of thing going on here. You only get the integrated graphics. And the weight is also slightly more, I believe. The Surface Book is 3.6 pounds. This is 3.7, so it's only 0.1 pounds heavier. Not by a lot, so I would say that the weight is kind of similar. But again, keep in mind, this doesn't have a dedicated graphics in the base. So where is that extra weight coming from? Not sure. But at least probably won't need as much cooling because it would be using integrated graphics. Okay, so big change in design here from the Surface Book is that the Surface Book had this detachable display right here, right? Uh, this one is also detachable, but it's also convertible. So you can flip it. 360 degrees like this. Whereas the Surface Book, you basically had to detach it and rotate the hinge, uh, rotate the, um, the laptop, and then put it back on the other way, which is a lot more time consuming to do. Whereas this one, just flip it over 360 like a regular yoga or something like that, right? So you can see the gears here. This is their uh, unique hinge for gears, right? And I like the fact that it, flow, it folds down flat like this. You can also take a look at the ports here, our port selection. We have a micro SD card slot, which actually I use more than a full size SD card slot these days. Um, I used to use full, full size SD cards only for my Sony Alpha cameras, but now I don't even use that anymore. Uh, so I use micro SD a lot more. So I'm glad that micro SD is on here. Because it's barely useful at full size SD, and of course, just having the slot is uh, pretty useful. Two full size USB A ports, again, appreci appreciated for legacy compatibility. And then we have two Thunderbolt, uh, at least I think this one's Thunderbolt 3. This one might be just for charging, um, might be just a USB C for charging. But this one's Thunderbolt 3. So at least you have one Thunderbolt 3 port here, which is ubiquitous these days because everything connects through Thunderbolt 3 now, which is great. And then on this side, you have just the headphone jack and power button and volume rockers right here. And yeah, I like the design. It is a very, very nice design. It's made from solid aluminum, just like the MacBook. But for some reason, the Porsche design feels like the aluminum is more polished. It's like this really nice, shiny gunmetal finish, which is really nice um, and pleasing on the eyes. And I also like the fact that there is no gap like on the Surface Book when you close the laptop and it charges with USB-C instead of having the proprietary Surface Connect port. Again, the bezels here are quite large, right? You have a large top bezel, a large bottom bezel here. I really wish they could have gotten rid of this bottom bezel. If you're in the market for a convertible today, this might be a good one to pick up because it's quite, uh, it's offered at quite a big discount compared to the original price. So if you look at the current convertibles on the market, the top convertibles on the market, the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, or the Surface Book 2, or the Spectre, HP Spectre X360. Um, those are all great laptops. And, uh, or even the ThinkPad X1 Yoga, right? Those are all great laptops. Uh, these, this one can be found at quite a discount because it was only offered in one configuration. And uh, right now I got it for $800, which is 
quite a big discount from the original $2,500 and comes with a uh, pretty good spec still. So 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 gigabyte SSD is, if you spec'd out a current computer to those specs online, you would find that it would still be over at least $1,200, $1,300 at least, uh, probably around the $1,500 range for this kind of premium convertible. Uh, whereas this one can be found online for a good price for $800, that's how much I got it for, with those kind of specs, right? So it might not have the latest CPU. I know the, the uh, 8th gen, 9th gen, and 10th gen CPUs are much better, but you can definitely find uh, the amount of RAM and SSD you get with this is still pretty good. And I think it's a pretty good deal still, especially considering this design is really unique. You know, I thought that more manufacturers might go with the detachable plus 360 design like the Porsche design did. But so far to this day, this is the only laptop on the market that you can get that's both detachable, that has this hard detachable tablet style configuration like the Surface Book, and it's a 360 degree convertible like the Lenovo Yoga. So I think this is still the only laptop like that. So that's pretty unique. And um, we have an extra button here on the side for detaching, right? Uh, I think I, yeah, okay. I said that it was the power button before. Yeah, it's actually, I think this is the, this is the detach button, not the power button. I think the, um, the power button is actually on the top of the display right here. So this is the power button, uh, pretty much in a similar place to the Surface Book up here. And then the detach button for the screen is over here, which I like better than putting the detach button here on the keyboard, which is where the Surface Book has it. The reason is because um, this way it keeps the keyboard free of any special keys so you don't mess up because you're pretty used to these keys. These are all standard laptop uh, laptop keyboard, right? Keys you don't have any special detached keyboard key that you might accidentally hit. Whereas this time it's on the side now, right? That's good. Another thing I like is the headphone jack is on down here, which I like in a better position than up here, right? The Surface Book had it all the way up here which is really annoying because it would kind of like get in the way. Like if you're using a wired headphone, it would get in the way, right? The bottom one's a lot better placement, I think. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look and power it on. By the way, guys, if you have any doubts about the heritage of this laptop and where the design came from, you can always look at the bottom of the laptop where you'll find something pretty unique to this laptop. It says, engineered by Porsche Design Germany. How many laptops do you find on the bottom that says engineered in Germany, right? That's pretty cool. You'll probably find something, you know, on your Apple products that say designed by Apple in California, but how many products do you have or tech products that you have that actually says designed and engineered in Germany? That's pretty cool, right? It's probably made in China, but you know, every laptop is made in China. Every phone is made in China, but it's not often that we see, um, something that says you know engineered in europe yeah, that's pretty cool that's the mark of uh the luxury branding here i guess all right just so you guys know the pen actually magnetically sticks to here uh, like this and i like the fact that it's blunt on one side so that it doesn't roll so it's rounded on these sides but it's blunt on this side so that way it doesn't roll off the table like the surface pen would or the apple pencil for that matter so let's just turn this on okay let's turn it on you will see the porsche design logo here And it uses Windows Hello. That's what the infrared cameras up here are for. Uh, no fingerprint sensor. So Windows Hello is the only form of alternate authentication. It would be nice to have a fingerprint sensor though. Uh, let's test out the detach. All right. So I can detach this. Whoops. Yeah, like that. And uh, when it's detached like this, then uh, you can see like there's still kind of this hinge left, which it looks really unsightly 
compared to the Surface Book, I think. Just having this, I don't know. I mean, the Surface Book is like this too. Um, I don't know. It just stands out a little bit more here for some reason. Uh, again, you have an asymmetrical tablet right here. And some people says it digs into their hands or something like that because this is not curved. A little bit, I think, but not too much. Yeah, it's all right. And so this part weighs maybe 1.5, 1.6 pounds-ish. So if you really wanted to just use this as a drawing pad or, you know, standard tablet for taking notes or an ebook reader for uh, reading books or something like that, it should be no problem. So anyways, yeah, uh, that's the detaching tablet part. Uh, again, you cannot put this the other way like in the Surface Book and you don't need to because this is a full 360 degree hinge. So yeah, if you just wanted to put into stand mode, you would just do it like that. And that's partly the main reason why I switched to this from the Surface Book is um, I always wanted to watch movies and videos or give presentations. All I have to do is flip it over like this. It only takes a few seconds. Whereas with the Surface Book, I have to you know, wait for all the, uh, all the signals to be correct and then detach it and then flip it around and then flip this around and re reattach it. And that takes like, I don't know, a minute or so, which um, you might think is not, not a long time, but if you do it enough, it gets kind of bothersome. So I should prefer this design better. Again, there's pros and cons. The pros of the Porsche design, Porsche design over the Surface Book is that it has this 360 degree hinge and the design looks a lot better in my opinion. Uh, it looks pretty sleek and um, instead of the mini display port or the USB-C port, it has a full Thunderbolt 3 port here and it has a micro SD instead of a full size SD compared to the Surface Book 2. Uh, the, the cons of course is that uh, it has, uh, doesn't have a dedicated GPU, so that's the main con here. It's not as powerful as the Surface Book 2, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU and it's a little bit heavier. Um, and I think the, uh, the hinge part of this could be designed a little bit better when you take the tablet off. I think other than that, it really depends on what you want. If you really want to have a dedicated GPU, then you would go for the Surface Book 2. But if you care about the 360 degree hinge uh, and the detachable part of which this laptop is the only one that's like that on the market still to this day, 2019, um, and then this is your only choice. Uh, it really makes for a unique convertible though because there's really no other laptop on the market that's like this and it's actually kind of rare to find the Porsche Design Book 1 now since they only came out with one model and not a lot of people bought it, it wasn't very popular. So it's actually kind of rare to find this laptop at all these days. Um, oh yeah, another con is that this is a 16.9 display whereas the Surface Book has a 3.2 display which I would think most people prefer for uh, productivity and reading web pages. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you, your uh, preferences. Uh, I do, I definitely think the Porsche design is more unique than the Surface Book though. So I've seen a lot of Surface Books around. Uh, they are really good all around computers. And of course I own one as well. But uh, the Porsche design, I mean, not a lot of people have this computer. So even using this in a coffee shop is gonna turn some heads, right? It's uh, a lot of people have Yogas, you know, Lenovo ThinkPad Yogas or uh, Yoga Books or whatever, or uh, HP Spectre X360s or Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. Um, those are some of the more popular convertibles on the market. But when you bring out a computer that says Porsche design on it, that's pretty unique. People are going to be like, what? What is that? Right? <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, that's it. That's the Porsche design book one, the unboxing and uh, kind of overview of this laptop. Uh, I think it's a fairly unique computer to pick up and the price can be had for a fairly uh, reasonable, I think, price online right now. Pick this up for 800 bucks, 512 gigabyte SSD, 16 gig RAM, 7th gen Core i7. So uh, with a really you know, unique design and everything. So I think it's a good pickup if you can find it on eBay. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching.